Every business wants good customer reviews. Every customer wants a good experience. So what happens when both sides click? Or in some cases, when they don't? From Yelp and Entrepreneur Media, this is Behind the Review. Emily Washkovic, Yelp small business expert. Every episode, I pick one review on Yelp and talk to the entrepreneur and the reviewer about the story and business lessons behind their interaction. This week, I'm doing a deep dive into creating a review response strategy for your business and leveraging your online presence to attract new customers. Whether it's a Yelp listing or another online review site, your reputation matters and is a reflection of the work you do with your customers. Having a strategy in place for responding to reviews can help you maximize that online presence and spread the word about who you are and what you do the way word of mouth does, but amplify. A big misconception when it comes to online reviews is that you only need a strategy or plan for responding in the case of negative or critical reviews. When in fact, there's so much opportunity in responding to all types of reviews. Another thing many assume but get wrong is the idea that online reviews are mostly negative. On Yelp, over 75% of reviews are positive, and we have more five-star reviews than one, two, and three-star reviews combined. Most people overwhelmingly turn to Yelp to share positive experiences of places they love, rather than criticize places they don't. So instead of fearing the negative, get excited for the positive and have a plan in place for when you receive both. On every platform, I comment back on every review, good, bad, or ugly, because I think it's very important because why would you only respond to the negative? You have to reach out to the people that took their time to give you a positive review and let them know that you appreciate that. I think it's super important to do that. It's incredibly important. And even more, simply being open to hearing customer opinions and not jumping directly to the question of star rating or right and wrong can provide valuable learnings and insights. We make sure we understand because, in my opinion, if there is a negative review, it's a good teaching moment no matter what it is. Even if we didn't do anything wrong, it's still a good teaching moment. So we do address that. We try to respond to every single review to say thank you. That's important. And it certainly makes an impact on your consumers as well. I've had both. So I've had it where I've given positive feedback on a business and I get the owner or someone will actually comment on my review and say, thanks for the boring review. Um, It's always great to hear that. It really motivates you to want to write more reviews. I've also had just the opposite where I've written more of a critical review and the business owner responds and says, hey, come try me again. You know, we're not usually like this. So That, you know, the shoe goes on both feet. It definitely deepens my relationship to the business. It actually makes me realize that Yelp is making a difference and that the business owners are looking at what people are saying about their business. That's important. So it makes me want to write more reviews and and keep uh, putting quality reviews out there. Your response can deepen the relationship with the customer and it can reflect your customer service practices to all future consumers as well. When I'm reading reviews about a business and I see a company responding, it gives me an idea about who that company is. To me, a random one star doesn't mean much to me because usually I'm like, okay, Karen, moving on. But I can tell a lot when I see a business responding about what kind of business model they have. Are they customer focused? Are they calm, cool, and collected? in their response? There's so much you can learn about the company that you're about to do business with. So keep that in mind when you're responding to reviews. As the business owner or manager, you need to make sure that you're taking the high road and remaining professional in your response. Even if the reviewer isn't playing fair or being honest in their review, don't stoop to their level. So how do you go about responding to critical reviews, especially when your emotions are high? If you have something good to say, say it right away. If you don't take a deep breath, And we never, ever, ever have replied to a review angrily, okay? We've never lost our temper in that situation. Maybe we're disappointed. Maybe it's a situation where we 
felt like we went above and beyond to help somebody, but the experience did not turn out the way the person expected it to. Those things do happen. But if I'm going to reply to a negative review, and by the way, I reply to all the negative reviews personally, it's not something that's assigned to anybody. The review is, first of all, the right back is never immediate. Okay. I let it sit for a day or two. And there are times, in fact, just a little hint to the Yelp listeners, there are times when that reviewer might fall outside of the Yelp algorithm and the review may just disappear because it's not credible. Maybe the person, it's the only one review that they've written and whatever the algorithm is that drops reviews, it causes that review to fall off. So I kind of wait and hope that happens, first of all. Secondly, I'll write the reply in Word, okay, on a document that cannot possibly accidentally be posted. And I'll read it, I'll reread it, and then maybe edit it. And then finally, I will post it. If we are fortunate enough, and in many cases we are, where we can track this person down to a specific order, before I even reach out on Yelp, I'm going to send them an email privately if I have their email address. And I will address their disappointment. And I hope to be able to do something. And the key word to us is we hope to be able to make amends. That's really a straightforward way to apologize and, hey, I want to make this right and throw it in the customer's hands and ask them, what can we do to correct the situation? And if they reply to us and if it's resolved without asking, we hope that the review goes down or we hope that the review is updated. And we hope that the consumer at that point takes it upon themselves to readdress the issue with what happened subsequent to the negative review. I will parenthesize here for a moment. I'm going to say that, you know, oftentimes a negative review is not bad if it's followed up online with a resolution and a show of how you resolved it. So either the customer will take down the review or they will post a follow up with hopefully more stars, or at that point, I would step in and write something. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to make this right for you. And I hope you have accepted our full refund and the complimentary flowers and, you know, everything else that we did for you. And so we will state our case if they have not. If they have, then we're going to come back with a humble expression of appreciation. Not over the top, not overly extensive. Okay. Humble, positive, and grateful to the person that they said or did what they said and for giving us the opportunity to do that. So that's basically the rules that we follow when it comes time to addressing the negative review. And most of the time, yeah, it works out that way. I will say that it's an entire playbook on how we go about it step by step. And in no case have we ever deviated from that playbook, which of course has evolved over time. And Nick makes another really important point when it comes to making things right or turning around the consumer's experience. Usually I will start off the conversation, whether it's on email, whether it's public online on Yelp or however else we reach the customer. And in a true empathetic Fados fashion, with a lot of sincerity, I'm going to say something like, I wish I could turn the clock back and make this right in your experience the first time. At that point, to be honest, I'm not concerned about getting the person to change the hypothetical one-star review to a two-star review or a five-star review. I'm not looking for more stars, okay? And I want to talk about that for a moment. I'm looking to express sincerity. I'm looking to express care. And I'm looking to express what can we do to make this right? Expressing sincerity, not being overly concerned with the star rating, but rather the customer's experience and making things right or turning them around. That's what's important. Something else I find extremely important to mention is that not all feedback or criticism is valid or worth making a change in response to. I think many restaurants, including myself, we have a tendency sometimes to jump and change things really quickly based on negative feedback. Learning how to approach reviews in a helpful way and in a structured way has really allowed us to 
manage reviews as a mode of feedback. I don't know if this is extra. I don't know if this is consistent with every, what everyone else is doing, but we respond to most of the reviews that people post. We're very, very thankful for that. And we've learned a lot, right? We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll talk about what to do when you're in the wrong and the best way to encourage engagement and feedback from your customers without asking for reviews. Busy restaurants have tons of greasy pots and pans and greasy surfaces with less labor to spend time doing dishes and cleaning. Well, for you, maybe Dawn Professional Manual Pot and Pan Dish Detergent and Dawn Professional Multi-Surface Heavy Duty Degreaser can help save you some time. They're specifically formulated to cut through tough commercial kitchen grease. Dawn Professional Manual Pot and Pan cleans 58% more pots and pans per sink, reducing sink changeover versus the leading competitor's professional dish soap. Dawn Professional Multi-Service Heavy Duty Degreaser cuts grease two times faster versus the leading professional food service supplier's national degreaser. So what are you going to do? You should upgrade to Dawn Professional Manual Pot and Pan Dish Detergent and Dawn Professional Multi-Surface Heavy Duty Degreaser from P&G Professional. Spend less time cleaning and more time doing what you love. Go to pgpro.com to learn more and sign up for great deals. Again, that's pgpro.com. I take ownership of any legitimate problem that surfaced from the once our review. First and foremost, it needs to be a learning opportunity for the organization. If we messed up somehow, we got to own it, we got to fix it. And then we have need to post a response that lets them know and in the general community that we are committed to fixing any problem that was discovered. If there's nuggets in there for me to take responsibility and ownership of, I do it. That's my opinion of reviews. We're all human. Businesses are made up of humans. And sometimes things go wrong or people's expectations aren't met. When that happens, you want to acknowledge it and see if there's any potential learning or takeaway you can gather for your team. Critical reviews can hurt, but they can also be helpful. So usually by the time I listen to somebody half the time, that's how Yelp's going anyway. They want people to listen. They want people to hear what they had to say. They want to voice this concern because it's not okay. And I'll listen to them and I'll be like, I'm taking action on this. I'm going into my company. I'm going to build a better company. Every time I thank them for it. Thank you for the one-star review. This is how I grow. If, without you bringing these mistakes to my attention, I would never know they were occurring. So you're a layer of accountability for me to build a better business. And usually I send them like treats in the mail. I'll say, hey, I know who it is. I have in my system something that I never ask somebody to change a review, ever, never. Leave that up there. That's real. You'd be amazed. I bet half, if not three quarters of those reviews go from one to five stars just because you listened to them and they got the result they were looking for. Josh is right. Having a plan in place to connect with customers and try to make things right can often result in them updating their review or turning around their comments about the business. But that's not always the outcome. And remember, it's not truly our goal either. More than anything, we want to respond to reviews as a way to reflect our customer service practices to all potential customers. And literally, I would say on probably 99 or 95% of my reviews that have three stars or less, you will see that I will respond and I will put my cell phone on there to call me. And I would say maybe... 10% ever call me back because I do want to hear because words, when someone can sit back behind a computer and type, you don't always know the tone that's coming from, but what you can assume is that anything from a three or less, they weren't happy. So what I do is, Hey, I'm sorry about the experience. We'll we'll reach out most of the time, unless it's some crazy thing that I know that I have no control over, but I will reach out no matter what and saying, Hey, this is what I'm sorry about your experience. Can you please call me on my cell phone so we can talk about this? I put my public cell phone for most of those bad reviews and most people don't call back. And I think that's where I get upset the most is when obviously someone took the time to write that review out of their day. So I already messed up by ruining their day or by not living up to their expectations. But then when I reach out to someone and say, Hey, can we talk to figure out how we can make it better or how I can learn from this? I can totally understand the frustration of replying to a critical review and then not hearing back from the reviewer again. It's like they left you hanging. But remember, your response is not to win the reviewer over necessarily. It's more so to reflect your customer service practices to all potential consumers who look at your listing. 
By sharing a phone number or email address for people to get in touch with you, you're more likely to have consumers connect with you directly if they have an issue rather than provide the feedback in the form of a critical review. And remember, sometimes there are even situations where you receive critical feedback, but your business's product or service was delivered or served exactly to your standards. It just didn't meet the expectations of the customer. I got one one one-star review once. It's the most hilarious thing ever. He was mad that we were pre-order only. It was during the pandemic. I didn't have any employees. It was literally myself and my husband. And so... I, I could only be pre-order and I couldn't afford to hire people. It said everywhere that we were pre-order only on online. It said we're everywhere. And so he wrote a review and I, I did respond to the review. I was not rude. I responded to the review and I told him that I didn't feel it was fair that he was holding us to a standard that he had created and, and not a standard that we as a business model had ever set. We had explicitly said from day one that we were only pre-ordered and that was our service model all the way. And we actually were never going to be walk-up. The only reason we offered walk-up was because of this one-star review. This might seem completely unfair that a consumer ranked a business one star for not offering something they never offered. But try to get out of the mindset of being consumed with the star rating and take it as an opportunity to state who you are and what you provide. Natasha may have started selling pie by the slice after that negative review, but she could have just as easily written a public response to affirm that she doesn't sell pie by the slice, but you can connect with the business online to place an order for pickup. The last topic I want to cover today is growing your online reputation and spreading the word about who you are and what you do without soliciting or asking for reviews. On Yelp, it's against our terms of service and content guidelines to solicit or ask your customers for reviews. And to be honest, it's a pretty icky thing from the consumer perspective anyway. You want customers to naturally share their experiences with your business online. And a great way to let them know you care about your online reputation and would love to hear their feedback is to let them know you're on social and review platforms. Put links to your listings on your website in your email signatures, and in other promotional materials. You can also share a review of the week or month from any of your online listings to your social media accounts. This is a great way to remind your existing customers that you'd love to hear their experiences and feedback without making a direct ask. Something you want to avoid is having devices in your business asking customers to write you reviews on the spot or sending mass emails in a newsletter form to a database of customers asking them to write you reviews. Instead, provide great customer service and memorable experiences that will translate into positive customer reviews in no time. It's as easy as that. To wrap up and summarize, creating a great review response strategy is just as important as creating a great consumer experience. I hope this was a valuable guide to how businesses approach responding to reviews. Keep their advice in mind as you look to build your reputation online. And that concludes our episode. Be sure to subscribe so you get new episodes every Thursday. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to take a thing or two away to implement in your own life, whether it's a new idea that you can bring back to your business or a fresh perspective on how to be a positive influence as a consumer. We share these stories to inspire and create more meaningful connections in your local community. For more information about today's business or to connect with me, check out the show notes. This episode featured advice and takeaways from various guests who have been on Behind the Review in the past year and a half. To learn more about the episode, check out the blog post. And don't forget to subscribe so you get an alert each Thursday when a new episode comes out. To claim your own Yelp business page and start engaging with consumers, visit business.yelp.com. Our theme song is performed by Ali Schwartz and produced by Robbie G of Messerol Sound. The show was produced and edited by Entrepreneur Media.